Get you honky tonks. I didn't know we had our own police force. <laughs> well, well, well. Oh, hello, Mr. Sykes. Yeah, can this really be Mr. Scroosby, the local villain pushing a baby's prayer? That's right. I'm taking my sister's baby for a walk. Your sister's baby? Yeah. But her old man's been inside for three years, hasn't he? I know, but he writes a very passionate letters. <laughs> All right, darling, shovel. Let's make for the island, eh? Oh, <laughs> Silas, you're all the same. That's right, darling. Up, spirits. Keep your hand on your eight feet. Jack's here. <laughs> Marriage. Sorry, sir. No parking inside. <laughs> Have a nice walk, Shrewsby. Yeah, I took her down the lake to see the ducks. Wonders will never cease. Uh, you want to stick to that sort of thing, Shrewsby? Uh, Quietly feeding the ducks? I will. I'll give up being a villain. Yeah, good lad. <laughs> That's a ship of the Royal Navy. The kind of ship that split the blasted hut out of the sea. And Jerry caught sight of one of those, he'd scuffle back into port. Look at that. <laughs> That's a real fighting ship, that is. Watching you play, and I'd like to congratulate you. Thank you. Mind you, I don't think your opponent liked being beaten by a girl. Really? I thought he'd give you the works when he had you pinned down on the baseline. Pardon? It really did look as though he was going to get on top of you. Oh, you are awful. But I like you. <laughs> Blasted rates. Not paying those till I have to. 
Oh, another letter from Great Aunt Ella. More bounty from the Bahamas. Now, my darling. Thank you. Hello, the old cheque's a bit bigger than usual this month. Yes, last time I wrote, I mentioned the school fees had gone up. Ah. Must say she's been marvellous to kids, hasn't she? Absolutely marvellous. Hundred pounds each, every month, regular as clockwork. And all that clothes and education. Yes. Do you remember when our little daughter was taken ill? We had to fly that specialist over from Heidelberg. Must have cost Aunt Ella all of two thousand pounds. Eh? Still, she's very fond of the children. Yeah. And after all, we are the only family she's got. Mm. Any news in the letter, darling? Mm, just general chit chat. Oh, she does say here, by the time you receive this, I shall be in Europe. Ah, yes. The annual pot around the art gallery of Italy, I suppose. Mm. Of course, there's no chance of her coming to see us, is there? Oh, good Lord, no. She hasn't set foot in this country for what? Seventeen years. Mm. Must say she's kept her word, you know. Swore blind she'd never come back here after that Labour MP jilted her. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see the old girl. So would I. Do you realise she's never set eyes on our kids? Neither has anyone else, dear. What? We haven't got any flaming children. <laughs> they don't exist. You invented them. I know, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Well, they may be figments of our imagination, but they've been jolly good to their old mum and dad, haven't they? <laughs> what the hell are their names again? Jack and Jill. Oh. <laughs> Not very well, for twins. Well, as I remember, you were drunk at the moment of conception. Yeah. Well, it was prepared, Aunt Ella, for the kids' further education, I suppose. Yes, I suppose so. Now, uh, Jack wants to be a doctor. That's going to cost a fortune. And as for Jill, well, I... I know you don't agree, and the fees are astronomical, but I plump for Rodine. You greedy swine. If you go on like this, you'll break the poor old thing. Nonsense. I'm just a good father, that's all. I'll get it. Hello, double four four seven. Good God. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Hello, Auntie. How are you? How nice to hear you. Uh, me? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, uh, yeah, and Connie. The twins? Um, uh, they're in the garden. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jill's in her job purse. Yes, she's absolutely wild about that pony you bought her. <laughs> Jack? Uh, well, he's just a bit downhearted at the moment. Silly old boy. No, why? Well, he, you see, he's got his heart set on a motorcycle, and you know how expensive they are. <laughs> you wouldn't. Uh, it never fails. <laughs> this is an absolutely marvellous line, Auntie. Where are you speaking from, Venice? What? <laughs> he threw? <laughs> but I thought you said you weren't coming back after that Labour MP. He what? He dropped dead last week. <laughs> uh, hello, Auntie. I, I, I suppose you're waiting for, now, waiting for the plane to take you to Venice. <laughs> you are? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, super. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it doesn't go for another three hours. <laughs> so you're coming over here. You want to see the children. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you do. Uh, you'll be with us in an hour. Yeah. Okay, bye bye, Auntie. My God, what are we going to do? I think we'd better start praying for the first recorded instance of a taxi being hijacked. This way, Aunt Ella. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Well, it really is marvelous to see you, Aunt Ella. I can't tell you, Aunt Ella. I can't tell you how. How shattered we were to get your phone call. I mean, we didn't even know you were in the country. Oh, do sit down, Aunt Ella. I wouldn't have been in the country, my dear, had I not heard the news that that rotter who jilted me had at last received his just desserts. Oh, but still, it, it was a long time ago. I expect you've forgiven him by now. Not that devious little swine. I'd happily have danced on his grave had he not been buried at sea. <laughs> well, now. 
Do you realize that it's 17 years since I set eyes on that husband of yours? Where is he? Richard, uh, well, he had to pop down to the village to uh, buy a couple of things. Oh, I do hope he won't be too long. There are so many things I want to talk about. Auntie, how are you? <laughs> Just as lovely as ever. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, <laughs> you always were a flatterer, Richard. It's what a pity you can't stay. Still, typically, <laughs> just... <laughs> just miss your plane. We'll have a chat on the way back to the airport. What? Oh, no, 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 Richard. I, I'm not in that much of a hurry. I, I've plenty of time to see everything and, and everybody. Oh. oh, well, jolly good. <laughs> now, don't keep me in suspense any longer. Where are those gorgeous twins? The twins? Uh, yes, uh, have you, uh, told Auntie where the twins are, dear? No, uh, uh, no, I haven't. Oh, uh, well, I'd better tell her. Yes, um, they're in Lowestoft. <laughs> <laughs> Lowestoft? That's right, yes, they've, uh, gone fishing in a trawler. <laughs> but when I telephoned about an hour ago, they were playing in the garden. Uh, yes, uh, yes, that's right, that's, uh, when they got the idea. Let's go fishing, they said, and bring Auntie back a good, big, fresh fish supper. Mm. <laughs> this is awful. They'll never be back in time. I'm <laughs> afraid not. <laughs> so let's get packing back here and go as fast as we can. And... Oh, what a disappointment. You see, I've arranged a little surprise for them. Surprise? What sort of surprise? I'm going to settle a few thousand pounds on each one. A few thousand pounds? Oh, oh Auntie, Auntie, how generous <laughs> of you! But my solicitor says that if I don't get their signatures today, it could cause considerable delay in the payment of the money. Yeah. Listen, isn't that an aeroplane? <laughs> <laughs> my word. I say, the twins have got back. I'll rush out and meet them. But Richard! understand that they've arrived by plane? Yes, they always fly from Lowestoft. <laughs> Must make your fish rather expensive. <laughs> yes, but Richard and I simply can't bear to be parted for the children from very long. And it does you both great credit, my dear. We must try to capture every precious moment of their delicate and fragile childhood. Hello, Archie! <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, is that... Is that you, young Jack? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> Isn't he a fine little man? Come over here and give your a kiss. shy. There. <laughs> oh, my word, look at that hair. He's a warner, all right. Your grandfather was ginger, too. Oh, no. <laughs> I kiss all the girls. <laughs> now, what lovely fish have you brought your old auntie back from Lowestoft? Hey, what? Oh, now isn't that nice? A, a jar of anchovy paste. Yes. <laughs> yes, dear, they're real. And when auntie goes upstairs to live in heaven, your little sister shall have the... Oh, lucky old Jill. Uh, Jackie, I think you ought to go upstairs and give yourself a wash. There's a good boy. Yeah, all right, Mum. Yeah, okay. right. Just a minute, dear, before yeah. you go. I want you to sign your name on this piece of paper for Auntie. You don't mind, do you? No, I don't mind. No, I oh, don't mind. Oh, dear. Silly me. I'd forgotten. I need your daddy's signature first. I'll go and get him for you, Auntie. How can you, you fool? <laughs> <laughs> I know where daddy is. I'll go and fetch him, Mummy. I'll go and fetch him. <laughs> <laughs> child so considerate to his parents <laughs> yes you've often written that in your letters tell me does he still love to crawl into bed for a little cuddle like he used to my word yes he <laughs> certainly does you ask any of the au pairs i've had to get rid of excuse me madam but if you want to get back to the airport there's not much time left oh thank you driver i won't be long very good madam <laughs> and to cap it all, to cap it all, <laughs> yes, to cap it all, he spends all his pocket money on buying me flowers. Oh, how charming. <laughs> 
Jack says you want me, Auntie. Yes, Richard. I want to, you to put your signature on here, please. Oh, Tolly, right here. I say, what a lot of money the kids are getting. Aren't they lucky, what? <laughs> now, where's that young rascal of yours? Will you call him? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's no good calling him, you see, because he won't be able to hear. He's, uh, he's in the bathroom. Yes, uh, I, I'll go and get it myself. I, I, I shall want to see Jill as well, don't forget. Yes, I won't forget. <laughs> I've been thinking about that ever since you arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Richard and Jack do seem to rush about rather a lot, don't they? Yes, they're always on the go. <laughs> Can I offer you a drink, Auntie? I'm sure you'd like one. No, not for me, thank you, dear. Not for me. You don't mind if I have one, do you? Not at all. Not at all. Cheers, Auntie. Pain, pain. Where's the pain? Jim. I shall want to see Jill now, Jack. Yes, I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> Connie, dear, I, I hope you'll forgive me for saying this, but aren't you drinking rather a lot? <laughs> That's the third glass you've had in less than half a minute. Have I really? Funny, I don't feel as though I've had a drop. <laughs> I'll go and give Jill a shot. Jill, darling, you are coming, aren't you, darling? Because Auntie and Mummy are waiting. <laughs> oh, what a lot of noughts, Auntie. <laughs> Jill, darling, at last. Oh, doesn't she look absolutely enchanting? Come over here and let me look at you. Why don't you look at me from over there? I want you to sign this piece of paper for Auntie. Oh, all right then. <laughs> Bless her. One of the greatest gifts a woman can have. A little girl to call her own. Yes. Can I have the beads now, Mummy? No, no, dear. <laughs> Auntie isn't dead yet. <laughs> Sorry, lady, but if you don't want to miss your plane, we shall have to go straight away. Oh, dear, how Come time on. has flown. Uh, goodbye, Connie, my dear. And you, darling Bye -bye. child. Now, say goodbye to Richard yes, and Jack will. for me, won't you? Yes, yes. so out this way. Bye-bye. 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 I never thought we'd get out of that, my love. <laughs> I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'm not catching my plane. But what are you going to do, Auntie? <laughs> you don't want to stay here. No. I'm going to give your darling daughter a lovely treat. We'll have a whole week in Torquay, just the two of us. <laughs> we'll have breakfast in bed together every morning. <laughs> And so, Herr Professor, in view of your worldwide reputation, we decided to ask you to fly over from Leipzig to carry out this extremely delicate and confidential mission. I can only say that you are very wise. <laughs> uh, without wishing to appear conceited, I am the greatest living expert in this field of operations. There is nobody, you understand, or nobody who can equal my genius. <laughs> you British are nothing but ham-fisted, bumbling nincompoops. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, quite. <laughs> well, now, uh, before we proceed, I must repeat, you have been sworn to total secrecy. Well, of course. Very well. Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, schön, schön. <laughs> oh. Just think, 37 more Fockerwolfs during the Battle of Britain and Hermann Goering would have been wearing that. <laughs> uh, would you mind, Herr Professor? 
Could I see the fruits of your labour? Oh, Natalie. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> now then, tell the difference, yeah? <laughs> Superb, nicht wahr? <laughs> remarkable! Quite remarkable! It's impossible to tell, to tell the difference between one from the other. Um, of course, you realise why we asked you to make this replica? Of course. It is because you British, you big-headed British who won the war, have got no money. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to sell all your Queen's baubles in order to raise some ready cash. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is so. Uh, there's this oil shake, you see, yep. who wants it for his wife. She rather fancies dashing about the desert on a camel, wearing the blasted thing. Who, the camel? No, the wife. Ah. <laughs> yes, in the meantime, the stupid British will be paying to see my replica and never know the difference. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's hope they never do, old yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, uh, we'd better get the phony one back on display. Of course. Uh, which one is it? Ah. <laughs> that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Nicked. <laughs> <laughs> I am afraid I do not know which is the real one. Oh, good heavens, what are we going to do? Uh, we can't possibly send a fake off to that shake. If he suspected anything, uh, he'd cut our oil off. Well, do not concern yourself. I am going to apply the Schnitzelhausen test. Uh -huh. What's that? It's an infallible means of detecting precious stones and metals from imitation or spurious. In a few moments, the truth will be told. <laughs> the real crown of England will be revealed in all its glory, and the false one will be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid someone has beaten you to the punch. <laughs> but that's impossible. The last person to wear the crown was Her Majesty at the state opening of... You don't think... I don't know. She still has two boys at school. <laughs> Having left the docks, the lorry turned off the Surrey Commercial Road, where a bunch of villains forced it to stop, dumped the driver, and disappeared with 2,000 of these portable Japanese television sets. So if you should be offered one of these at a ridiculously low price, don't take it. Just get in touch with your local police. Bet they're worth a bob or two. Oh, Ernie, you wouldn't put up a fight if any criminal stopped your lorry, would you? But with eight tonne of fish manure. <laughs> I'd help them unload it, girl. <laughs> well... The fraternity seem to be picking on our foreign friends this week because somebody got onto one of these consignments of Italian-made crocodile handbags and got away with a couple of hundred of them. Aren't they lovely? Yeah. I expect a lot of you people watching are wishing you had one of these. But take my tip, if you're offered one, don't take it. Because if you're caught walking down the high street with it over your arm, you could be in for a lot of trouble. Especially if you're a fella. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Here are the numbers to ring if you should oh, spot Oh, come on, dear. Let's get off the bed, shall we? Yes. I'll just go and put Dad's cocoa on the stove. I could do with a good night's kip. I've got every day ahead of me tomorrow. Big job on. Oh? What's that? Oh, I can't tell you, love. Security. More than my life's worth. Oh, go on. You can tell me. I'm your wife. I won't say anything. No, love, no. Oh, go on. Tell me. I won't get a wink of sleep if you don't. All right. Listen. They've fallen behind with a rent at Buckingham Palace and they've hired my lorry to do a moonlight flip. <laughs> you fool! Oh. Lou, where are you? In here, Dad. I'll just go and do his cocoa. All right, darling. it. Oh, still up, are we? What do you mean? You were too tired to take your poor old father-in-law out and buy him a pint. I wasn't too tired. I was just too ashamed to be seen out here, that's all. <laughs> what are you doing drinking my beer? Oh, your beer, is it? Yes. Right. You tell me the name of what's on that label and I'll buy you a crateful. 
Yes, all right. It's, it's Filbert, Snap Brown. Wrong. I bought that in a boozer in Doncaster at dinner time. You lying RAF poofter. <laughs> You switch the labels, that's what you did. Switch the labels. You're always talking about it. You're in the house five minutes before you're at it. Now yes. drink your cocoa. All right. I like to do with something to eat, my love. I'm not starting cooking for you at this time of night. I think not, selfish old devil. <laughs> that's a nice way to talk to me, isn't it? Today, of all days. Hello, he's up to something. Well, what's so special about today? It's nobody's birthday or anniversary. Well, today I brought to fruition the culmination of an ambition I've been nursing in my breast for many a year. It definitely is up to something. All right. What is it? I want you to cast your mind back to a certain event that happened 34 years ago to this very day. Go on. Well, don't tell me you don't remember. Dad. 34 years ago, I was about 10 months old. Surely you remember me standing by your cot in home guard uniform with my hand on your little blonde curly head? How can she remember? Listen, if that kid in the cot had blonde curly hair, you was in the wrong house, mate. Oh, shut up! <laughs> I swore an oath that if I brought the beast of Berlin to his heels, I would celebrate the calumny of victory by buying my daughter a present she would never forget. Well? Well, I've just done it. <laughs> I knew there was a Jap in the jungle who didn't know the war was over, but I thought you'd have tumbled it by this time, mate. Well, it's a very nice thought. Not that I believe a word you've said. Uh, what have you bought me? Right. <laughs> a genuine Italian crocodile handbag. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that, eh? <laughs> Ernie, look at that. It is, isn't it? It certainly looks like it. Yes, I'd, I'd say it is. I'd... No doubt about it. What are you talking about? Dad, a few minutes ago, that handbag was on the television. How could it? It was stuffed up my waistcoat in the spread eagle. <laughs> it's a good job we switched off before you came in. Hey? Or that fella on the telly would have seen it. What? <laughs> it was on that police programme. That handbag is stolen property. How could it be? The fellow who sold it to me said it fell off the back of a lorry. <laughs> I suppose he lost his voice shouting for him to stop. Oh. <laughs> I don't care what you call it, Dad. That handbag is stolen and I'm not having it in this house. I'm the one who'd be knocked off in a supermarket with that hanging over my arm. I'd never be able to face the neighbours. The neighbours? What are you talking about? Darling, we live in a very naughty neighbourhood. Half the boys I was at school with are doing porridge. Just shows what a rotten school you went to. Oh, yeah? And half the girls you went to school with are taking their kids to see them. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've never done anything dishonest in my life. I've never stolen a farthing. There's a big difference, you know, to nicking things to finding them lying in a puddle. Dad. Tell me this, will you? How much did you pay for that? Five quid. Five quid? Yeah. And you reckon it ain't bent? It's oh. a ridiculous price. It must be worth a fortune. Yes. Oh, it does feel lovely. It's nice, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Dad, look at that. <laughs> Chamois yeah. leather right through. <laughs> and I reckon those fittings are gold-plated. Yeah. <gasps> it's gorgeous. <laughs> and it's all yours, my darling. <laughs> I don't want it. Take <laughs> it away. <laughs> Here, give it us back. Well, change your mind, have you? No. I want to wipe my fingerprints off it. <laughs> You're only I've just had a thought. Go and look out of the window. The police might have followed him home. Listen to the echo for Christia, Spicer's Row. Here. Yeah. There's a little dark van parked out the front. What? Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's only the bloke who sold me the handbag. I didn't have the money to pay him, so he gave me a lift home from the boozer. And you're not going to pay for it, either. You can take that rotten handbag and give it to him back and tell him to clear off out of it or I'll have the police on him. A blooming fine Vicky present this turned out to be. Served you right and we lost a flaming war. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my darling. You're such an upstanding citizen. How come you ain't contacting the police like that fellow on the television told you to do? For one thing, Dad would have been involved. And for another... I'm not quite as honest as I thought I was. <laughs> when I had my hands on that beautiful handbag, I was tempted. I don't know how I managed to let go of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you get rid of it? Yes, I told him we didn't want anything to do with his stolen property. Quite That's right. But he didn't want you to be disappointed, so I bought one of these little Japanese television sets. <laughs> <laughs>